Welcome to Lamb Chop Racing out on Zwift. Zwift, we are out on the Richmond UCI 2015 course for the Richmond Flat Roads. We are not going to be heading towards any of the hills today. Where Lamb Chop Racing is all about categories racing each other out on Zwift. You can see all of the category uh, limits for their watts per kilogram as well as their start times below each one of their jerseys out there. They're going to be wearing each one of those jerseys for the race today. I'm your host, Nathan Guerra, and I'm going to be doing the commentary for the racing out here today for the CHOP Racing. This is in uh, partnership with Black Sheep Cycling Apparel, and they are the ones who designed the jerseys uh, that are in game. If you want to earn them, you can go ahead and jump in to your category that fits your fitness level and uh, jump into the racing. Any of the categories can win. It's going to be one racer across the line at the end, so that means somebody in the D category can beat somebody in the A category because of the time gaps that are given to each one of the categories. But it's essentially a team time trial from the get-go. Race dates are starting on November 14th. This is our third race then, and uh, we are going all the way through December 19th, so six races in total. This is the European race. It started at 7 p.m. GMT for the women's race. This is a women's only race to start with, and then a open race will be starting at 7.45 p.m. GMT. There's also an America's race that is gonna be going on later tonight. If those in North America wanna jump into it, it will not be broadcast. We only broadcast European races, but they also have a women's only as well as an open to everyone race. Same times, but Eastern time, 7 p.m. at 7.45. So, handicap racing, we're out on course right away here. The D category has started out, and it is being led by a solid contingent of riders here with the ladies. Ten riders in the lead group for the D category right now. Uh, they'll be obviously wearing this light red, light red or salmon kit throughout the race here. They've got a solid uh, time gap of about seven minutes each, each uh, week. The riders will have different time gaps depending on the course. So today, I believe it was a seven minute time gap back to the A category. B category, it looks like uh, is going to be somewhere, I believe around five minutes back. The C category is just gonna begin our course and I believe they're starting with about a three, three and a half minute time gap at this, uh, uh, out here today on this week number three for the flat roads. It is five laps on the flat roads of Richmond out here today. We do have 30 ladies jumping into the C category as they're gonna be chasing down these Ds in just a moment. So gonna be pretty cool to watch how this ends up playing out. It's been pretty exciting the last couple of weeks and it, the organizers have done a great job on the timings each week here as it's been a very close race uh, weekend and week out here. Uh, the C category just jumping out on course it looks like here. 30 riders jumping out there and it looks like they are starting fast and furious. The uh, C category, again, for their category limits is up to 3.2 watts per kilogram. And here they go out of the pens. They are going to be wearing those black kits designed by Black Sheep Cycling Apparel. And uh, as you can see, 30 riders as we are looking here at, it looks like, Wilson here from Team Revo. And Revo has been a new force amongst the women's racing here recently. They've definitely been showing up. Hino up on Wednesdays I've seen them I've seen them in the fusion races as well showing up on Tuesdays uh, and we, they have a ton of supporters in the live streams you see them always in the chat so shout out to Revo out there women's racing team that is showing up and showing that they've got the numbers as well as the power and the encouragement as they out there and cheer each other on I'm seeing uh, it looks like Brinkley there from Revo this girl can hashtag this girl can it looks like as they try to chase down the front group, though, there's already a split now amongst the ladies here in this C category, actually. It looks like the top 12 or 13 have made the split. It looks like around 16th through uh, 17th, 18th, 19th place now, just trying to get back on terms here. And it is a team time trial. Because of that, having more riders uh, amongst the group because of the way that a pack dynamic will work is definitely important. Um, we actually talked to Lisa and Jane late before the race out here today, and she had some tactics actually to encourage the riders on with. Uh, she started Zwift just under three years ago, and um, when she was going through a, a rough patch in her life, it sounds like, and it sounds pretty cool, like, like this has been an amazing uh, platform for her to uh, get some encouragement as well as take her fitness to the next level. Uh, she's saying that as far as the tactics go, you want to encourage rotation, you want to encourage the packs to stick together. 
out on course rather than fight each other early on. Obviously, or the win at the end when the chop actually happens, when you know your category is going to win. Well, at that point, the gloves come off and it's the first one across the line. But they need to really encourage rotation, not drop anybody off too early as long as they're not dead weight. Uh, also, minimizing the intervals. So on the, if you are on the front and you are taking poles, you definitely want to be at a higher watts per kilogram than your functional threshold power or what you can hold for about one hour. You want to be more into that two to three minute uh, mark as far as what you can hold, but really 30 seconds to a minute uh, as it's allowed because you can sit back in and then that'll reserve enough energy to go right back to the front. It's essentially doing over un over unders over and over again actually when you're out here hammering away in a chop race w amongst the uh, category that you are in we are seeing sony whiteman actually toward the front end of the race here good to see whiteman jumping into the race here the 1.9 kilometers in in that c category we're back in with the d category though as it looks like they've completed about four kilometers so far and they are about seven minutes into their race here at this point 10th place in the back of this category we're looking at right now is going to be rosina here coming out of hungry it looks like s rosina 2.3 watts per kilogram or so. And you'll notice on the right-hand side of the screen, continually you'll see what kind of watts per kilogram that those riders are holding, holding throughout the race as the A category jumps out on to course. We've got some uh, kind of, uh, I would say, Zwift celebrities right now, actually, amongst this group here. Samara Shepard has jumped into race out here today and this if you're unfamiliar with it is a swift academy finalist going for a pro contract actually with the candy tram team so interesting to see she's gonna be uh looks like maybe warming up for her team camp that's gonna be happening here and i believe it's gonna be next week so good to see shepherd here out on course and i believe it's also did i see cassie baldy in there for dhr we got boardsman i mean this is a pretty serious group of Women's racers here in the A category in the lower right hand side of the course now or in the, of your screen now in the main screen here. Got 10 that's jumped in, but with the kind of firepower, we also see Neelan from the BRT team here. And this is a, a super strong rider as well that has recently, I believe, been in the top three amongst the Heino Cup uh, ladies in the A category. Um, on Wednesdays. That is a race series that's going on, put on by the community. And uh, Neeland here for BRT, definitely a strong rider as well, showing that she can show up amongst some of the strongest in the community on that uh, Wednesday's race. Four races in it, she was sitting, I believe, in the top three at that point. Now, after yesterday's race, it might have changed up as we did see a couple of national champions uh, of Zwift from the lady side of things show up and kind of walk away with it a little bit. But Neelan, definitely somebody's going to put some solid efforts in at the front of the A category. Now back in with the Cs, though, as we can see, we can see the groups uh, at the bottom of the screen now at this point. And it's a 29 kilometers in total for the race here. And uh, the gaps are also at the bottom of the screen, as you can see. So 4.3 kilometers in so far for the lead group that is the Ds. It'll let you know at all times where the groups are, they will be from left to right uh, for where they are positioned currently from first to uh, last place for the categories. And you also see the time gaps as you can see at the bottom of the screen. So 329 back to the C's between the D's and the C's. And then 535 from the D's to the B's. So that, that gap there is not between the B and the C group, but it's actually between the lead group and the B's. And then 634 back to the A's. Interesting to see, I think the A's had a struggle to get back up to the uh, anywhere close to the lead in the last couple of weeks. So a little bit lower time gap this week for that A category. With 10 ladies in there, it's going to be uh, still, I think, uh, some pressure on them. But they're closing things down pretty quickly to that B category. I think things are going to be a little bit closer uh, than we have seen in the weeks prior. Back with the B category now, as you can see, uh, as we are joining in with them, it looks like holding the solid 514. Only two minutes up to that C category here at this point uh, in with this B category here. But as you do see there on the flatter roads, it is mainly a crit course. As far as the course goes, there's a little bit of an uphill grind, but it's really just a false flat each lap. We'll be heading through the sprint uh, banner here in just a moment as they do a 180 degree turn. And then they head toward the industrial park a little bit, but there is a, there is a left-hand turn before they head down into the industrial park and on over toward Libby Hill. Uh, but instead of doing that, 
you take a left-hand turn up the cobbles and through that section, it's a one, two, three percent gradient or so uh, for about 30 seconds to a minute, but that's about it. Very flat roads and it's just gonna be all about really hammering out the wattage at the front end of the pack and uh, kind of a head down TT, everything you got. There isn't really gonna be any of these VO2 max kicks that we've seen on some of these other courses. And sometimes this kind of a course does favor the lower categories. Because when it comes to watts per kilogram, when it comes to what the categories are based on, which is going to be their kicks in the watts per kilogram a lot of times at those sections of the course that would be climbing, that's not going to be in this race. And so because it's on these flatter roads and there really isn't much climbing at all, seeing the D category may be a little bit more favored. And that might be another reason why they brought the time gaps down as well. So now back out looking at the time gaps at the bottom here. Four looks like 53 with the bees that we're looking at here they brought back a solid it looks like about a minute and a half or so uh so solid efforts here so far the d category here really is split up though at this point and it looks like uh with 10th place currently rosina has fallen off pace pretty quickly here and nine now it looks like in the front group and they're already as they take on their first time over the uphill grind in that D category right now. Uh, I believe it is going to be nine riders now with Timis here taking over toward the front 14 cryogen. It's gonna be Kozlowski as well as Egan here. Saunders now all toward the front. Still hidden, hidden hard within the category limits, but uh, definitely dropping riders off pretty quickly who just cannot hold the pace at around 2.6 watts per kilogram. Really into a nice echelon though, as you can see at this point, they're taking turns well, rotating well, and when they're lined up at, like this, as you can see, the riders, uh, and now see when it starts to bunch up there though, you can see that maybe the riders here are taking a little bit of reprieve, but when it gets into that steady line, it's just like in real life, where if it lines up and they spread out, as you now are seeing here, then riders you know at the front are starting to take their take a solid pull they're doing the work well and a few of them have fallen off the back here a little bit it looks like so uh, it is going to be i believe deneve as well as mag uh m magnitude out of canada as well as kronberger here falling off the pace just a little bit but all back together here now as it is kozlowski here out of Great Britain at 2.5 on the front of that D category now. Back in with the A's though, it looks like the uh, A category here, all still together. It is going to be, from what we can see, eight riders here still, as it is Kajin there from uh, RR as well as Vilan. It's gonna, excuse me, Milan as well as Bormans here from the Netherlands here of Team Experimento. Smart Shepard still in there, as well as Brewer from Team Fearless. Good to see uh, Brewer hammering away out there Lots of well-known names, actually, within the A category as Leah Brewer here for Team First, as well as her teammate Emily Slavin is jumping in there. As far as the ranked riders, some of the highest ranked riders, actually, out on Zwift here, jumping into the race now. So as far as Watts McKilgram, you have to hold the hang on at the front end of this race in this A category. Uh, we're looking at so far 4.5 Watts McKilgram hammered out by Cassie Baldy. Uh, riding for that watts per kilogram group and or excuse me team uh, Sylvia Bormans here solid four point it looks like or excuse me 3.7 watts per kilogram so far so pretty good spread between the riders Vicky Nealon maybe put for the Brat Pack maybe uh, not put out quite as much work as the other riders at 3.5 but uh, it is a little bit relevant though between each of the riders now if you're wondering what am I talking about what is this watts per kilogram it's very important to understand for the racing out here in each of the categories because that's how they're separated out is by what you can hold for about one hour straight for a functional threshold power functional threshold power the power you can hold for one hour straight but it's not just the raw power because in the upper left hand corner you do see that raw power 200 watts it's always shifting probably on a three second average or so uh, and you're looking at 202 206 that number though needs to be divided by the weight in kilograms of the rider that is producing it. And that is their current watts per kilogram that you're seeing on the right hand side of the screen right now, as we are looking at Bormans here for Team Experimental, that little X next to the name there representing it, the team. Right underneath the name there, you do see the current watts per kilogram. That is a live watts per kilogram. Now, that is not what we are basing the categories on for live, but it's what they can do for one hour straight. You know your functional threshold power by doing a test or that functional threshold power. Lots of different ways you can do a test. You can do an FTP test actually in Zwift. Go ahead and load it up and uh, 
be ready, though, for an all-out effort as uh, it is essentially racing yourself for the best effort you could possibly produce. So, uh, But make sure to know your FTP and jump on into a race. Uh, still time to jump into the open race, actually, that is taking place in about 30 minutes from now, starting at 7.45 GMT time. So back in with the C category, though, it looks like things are spreading out a little bit here in the Cs as we do have Sony Whiteman taking over toward the front. It's also Williams from Team Revo now up toward the front of the race here as it looks like we do have, still within this category, a solid contingent of riders all the way out to about 20 still in here and with so many riders still in the c category most likely get going to be the favored category on the day as uh the riders here in the b category as we look at the b category there are not quite as many riders here either as we're looking at 20 here i think c category definitely going to be favored out here today because of the amount of riders that they showed up today the b category here in the light blue and then the black here with the c's time gaps now at about two minute difference between each one well Actually, two minute difference between the D category, C category, and the Bs, but the A's within one minute of the B category. B category is really going to have to start stepping things up here. They're going to hold off the a A's, but early chop might be happening between them as they make the catch, and then it, you have a super group of riders as the B and the A category. Kind of the categories that are a little bit closer to each other in ability level between that 3.2 watts per kilogram and up to 5.0, a lot of times is going to be. Um, riders that are in there that can kind of hang on into that four watt per kilogram or more uh area so we may be seeing a few of the b's and the a's joining forces to chase down the rest of the groups out there uh as we are back in with the d category now it does look like uh a few of the riders maybe even got back on terms with them we are seeing the arrow power up being used there by one of the riders if you're unfamiliar with the power ups here and you're unfamiliar with swift uh power ups are in the lamb chops in in the lamb chop races and uh, the riders are able to collect those each time they go under either a sprint banner, a king of the mountain, queen of the mountain banner, or a start finish lap banner. So as you do go underneath those, you are able to grab, and you are seen in the C category, they just came underneath a banner. As you do see a few of the riders using power-ups because they were most likely looking for another power-up. So they use their power-up before they hit the banner, and then it goes ahead and it cycles through a new power-up that they can gain. And those give you advantages over the other, uh, well, advantages to your avatar. Uh, if you do have the giant truck that we did see just a moment ago over some of these avatars heads, that truck increases your draft. This is the drafting booster, drafting power up. If you see now that feather power up, just for a second there, that was over one of the rider's heads, that feather power up reduces the weight of the avatar, essentially making it so that you are able to climb or just produce some more speed because the weight of the avatar comes down, increases your watts per kilogram essentially, which is what speed is all about on the bike. The aero power up is going to be the helmet. That is going to reduce the drag on the avatar, the CDA uh, that is being produced on that avatar, which greatly increases your speed out on Zwift. And there's the feather power up as we're talking about them. And uh, it does look like it is going to be Jay Beckett here. Is that Joanna Beckett hammering away out there? Good to see. As uh, I believe we are also going to be having Steve Beckett uh, in the race here. Zwift employee, uh, head of marketing out there. And it looks like Joanna has also jumped into the race for the ladies side of things in the C category. So great to see. I believe that's going to be Joanna. Unless there just happens to be another J Jay Beckett out there. But uh, good to see both of them doing the lamb chop racing and uh, getting in a solid race before uh, Thanksgiving dinner. We did hear that that was part of the purpose here as um, Beckett CMO of marketing. He said he's riding. I believe that's going to be the same message here coming from Joanna as we spoke to Steve beforehand. He says he was getting ready for burning off the Thanksgiving dinner and uh, making Zwift a part of Thanksgiving tradition as uh, obviously earlier today we saw the Eric Min ride with Glory Diger. We had almost 3,000 people out on course. Now a few of the other uh, Zwift employees and Zwift family obviously getting out there and uh, making Thanksgiving a tradition with uh, each year of Zwift. It's great to see as uh, that's kind of what this is all about is more of a community ride, community race. You know, it's an amazing and fun time. It is a competition. But uh, since everybody can win and everybody works together within these categories, it's really what makes it more of a community uh, effort to get to the line first. And then gloves come off, as we say, 
uh, is they get toward the line. If you know your category is going to win, you start looking at the time gaps. You start figuring out, okay, we can have some infight, no love lost between us, and then make a sprint to the line. So uh, back in, though, with these A's as uh, they are really bringing this gap. The B's and the A's, both of them, look at this, 4.16. It started out at 7 minutes total, and already... It is really starting to come down here. We are 10K in for these A category riders here. And it looks like 12.3 here completed for that lead group. It's going to be a total of 29. So we're coming up to that halfway point in just a moment. If they bring it in within 3.30, they're on par then. Within the next couple Ks for that D category, if, if the A category brings it within 3.30, I believe we are going to be seeing a right-to-the-line situation between the A and the D category here. Only 2.02, though, back to the C. So I do believe this C category is going to be making the catch uh, fair within the next two laps or so. It is five laps total. If you head on over to ZwiftPower.com, you can see a live tracker, actually, of what lap that they are on on the live tracker. Always really great to see the work that Zwift Power has been doing uh, for these uh, for these races, for all the races actually, out on Zwift here. And uh, from what we can see, it does look like um, there is uh, about for that 154 back here, and they're going to be having one, two, about two and a half laps to go here, two and a half laps to go. They uh, toward the finish line on the day here. So C category here starting to break up a little bit. Interesting to see. Uh, as they are mixing it up with a few of the dropped B, or excuse me, the B, some of the B category now mixing in here as well. Interesting to see. So uh, has there been a catch? As we're seeing some of the jerseys already starting to mix it up amongst the others here. So uh, looking through this C category, and I believe this is going to be some of the dropped riders here from the C's actually. So that's what's going on there. I was wondering if there was an early catch that we were unfam that I that I might have missed, but that is just a few of the C's that have dropped off the pace of the main group. And that is going to be Godfrey uh, being caught there by Luz Frain, as well as N. Smith, who's leading things out. Solid 4.4 watts per kilogram in the front here coming from N. Smith in that B category. And uh, that is a solid effort in the B category here. Uh, some of the other racers in this B category, though, we're seeing Stacy Larkin from Team Bevo, Jessica Hamilton from the BRT team, Luis Godfrey there from CM Sports. Uh, as we said there earlier, Lisa Jane Late is out there as well in this B category. We got we chatted we chatted with her beforehand, as I said earlier. Got a lot of cool information about what her goals are within the uh, Chop Racing out here. Uh, her first races were in the Hare and Hounds T race as well as the CVR. Uh, so obviously. Some high-end racing there for Lisa Jane Late in this B category. She said that she won the green points jersey in the B category 2017-18. Then she was hooked. Recently, she also represented Great Britain at the World's Masters Fondo in Poland, finishing eighth in her age group, 45-49. Uh, she also got to meet people from Zwift and racing in real world. It's awesome to have some real-life friends that come from the virtual world, she's saying. Uh, pretty cool to see for sure. She said that she signed up for the lamb chop here as it seemed like it was fun for training. And that's what it definitely is all about here in these handicapped races. And that she loved chasing and encouraging the teamwork that is happening in the chop racing. Uh, we obviously saw a lot of that in the southern hemisphere, especially with the ride leaders that we saw all encourage each other on. Now they're most likely communicating within these categories between each other to make sure that everybody's put in the work and getting some leadership out there. Uh, saying that it's helping to pass a little experience of racecraft when she can to everybody out here and loves to uh, do the interviews here with them. So now it's all about the sprint, though, at the end. She's saying that she's going to try and reserve a little bit for the sprint, and it's all about the timing because you've got to know when the chop is going to happen amongst these racers. You know, what's going to happen between this A category and the B category? Now just swapping over to the A's here real quick as it is going to be the Team Experimental Bowman there at the front hammering away as they've dropped a few riders here it looks like smart shepherd hanging on cassie baldy is there still as well kajin is hanging on too it looks like but they're chasing down solid up against this b category it's only going to be an actually under a minute here at this point so a's and the b's uh really 
having to focus here at this point if they want if the bees want to hold off uh, that hard charging group of some of the most elite racers out there out on Zwift. Now the main goal here, you know, we we're chatting about this, some of the, the real life info here coming from Lisa Jane and uh, the avatar we're currently looking at here. And she actually, with the training that she's doing through Zwift and uh, the obviously Lamb Chop racing here and some of these other races that she was mentioning, her main goal is Rainbow Jersey at the Tour of Cambridge and a place at Master Circuit and Road Race Champs actually as well. So obviously some amazing in real life goals uh, for her racing career that are being supported by the efforts here out on Swift. And one of the main focuses, I think, and this is a great quote from her, that it's a great opportunity for women to race on Swift, uh, that they can get into races that are super exciting and obviously be highlighted here uh, in the racing world of Swift. So pretty cool to see, and that she said she's really excited about that as well. So, but uh, gonna have to really put the power down though to take the win out here today. It's 128 between the uh, C category at the bottom as we are seeing here. This is the C category. They are within 130 now. Actually, the D category doing a good job of keeping some of that uh, time gap out still. But it's only 45 seconds between this C category and the B category we're looking at here. And then look at this again, 45 seconds between the A's and that B category. So really coming down to the wire. I have a feeling it may be an A favorite race out here today. It's a 29 kilometer race in total. This is back in with the D category. And uh, D category here, as you can see, first place right now, they are 16.6 kilometers in so far. And from what we can see, it's, you know, with over 10K to go and about a minute 30 at this point between them and that B category. I have a feeling it is an A favored race out here today, but C's and the D's. Now look, here's the four way look at it and look at the waters in the upper left hand corner. Interesting to see as well, each one of the screens there, 152 and the comparison to 280 there. That's why we have all the have the time gaps. You know, it isn't all about raw wattage. Obviously, it's watts per kilogram, but there's also just the reality that there is some big discrepancies in the raw wattage. So, if you do want to jump into Zwift and you're looking at the numbers as we're looking at the A category, like, oh my gosh, 285 watts. What are you talking about? You know, the first place rider currently out there is just hauling with some Smart Shepard, Cassie Baldy now, 285 at the front. Just, I mean, these are Smart Shepard races on the World Cup circuit you know, within the mountain bike world. She's one of the strongest riders coming out of Australia. Uh, obviously, Swift Academy finalist. She is going for a pro contract through her racing career and riding career out on Zwift. And a pretty amazing athlete. But you can, if in the in the D category, you can win the race outright against them because of these time gaps. This is why it's all about community racing, all about everybody having fun, and getting an amazing workout out here. Because LM Magnitude coming out of Canada, is now battling it up against a World Cup rider like Samara Shepard here sitting in second place now. Trying to just hold on to the wheel there of Angmo from Vix, or excuse me, of Bormans here from Team Experimental out of the Netherlands, who's just ramping it up now. With 98 RPMs here coming from Bormans. There's the time gaps coming in at the bottom of the screen right now. And it's 2.51 within three minutes up to that front pack. And we said at the halfway mark, it'd have to be around that 3.30. And now that we're underneath three minutes and we're a little bit over that halfway mark, you know, I think this is, go it, it's really going to come down to the wire, actually. I thought it was going to be favor in this A category, but there's still some pretty good time here between the Ds and the As here now. So lead group, we're seeing there 17 kilometers in, about 11 kilometers to go here. And I believe for the time around each lap, we, we saw something, I believe it was around six minutes or so, uh, six and a half minutes for some of the faster times uh, on this course out here today. So we're looking at, from what I can see, about a lap and a half to go, lap and a half, maybe two laps to go at this point to the finish line. We're on lap three for the D category here now. So... Uh, they're going to really have to ramp things up, though, as they're going to be finishing up their last lap and a half, two laps here at this point with only a one-minute gap back to the C category. So back in with the C category, it's being led out solidly by Strange there from Revo. Revo here putting in a solid effort at the front here. All three at the front of the C pack, you know, at this point are 
part of that team Revo here. So good to see Revo showing up again as they always do, putting in a solid effort here. And uh, now moving backwards, it's going to be great, strange. And then she, Revo actually has, from what I can see, in this group, one, two, three, four, five, six, is that seven riders, I believe it is? Seven riders from Team Revo in the C category. We're going to give a shout out to all of them there. It's going to be CG Holmes in there coming out of Norway. Still Cal there as well. We're seeing Sarah Strange out of the US of A. Natasha Williams or <laughs> Revo Cookie Monsters next to her name. You know, a lot of the uh, Zwift Power, you know, the um, Zwift Power profiles will have a little spirit animal next to their name out there. It looks like Cookie Monsters instead is what Natasha Williams is going for. And uh, Naomi Fetter's out there as well. But Linda Gray for Revo as well. Uh, and then it's going to be Christine Shu and Beatrix Kiddo is out there out of Canada. All for that Team Revo. And they're all working together in this C category to try and pull those Ds with, uh, within uh, range for a sprint before the finish line. 53 seconds back. For them. You can see the ride-ons popping over the riders' heads there. Make sure to be giving the ride-ons there. Find your favorite riders out on Zwift right now. If you don't know how to do that, go ahead and download the Companion app. Head on over to the Play Store or, Apple, or your Apple Store. You can download the Zwift Companion app. It acts as a controller of Zwift, actually, as well. So you can pair it uh, to Zwift as a live game controller. Uh, and uh, you can also interact with other riders uh, and give them ride-ons if you follow them or you can see them. During the events, you can go ahead and search some of these riders right now. See your ride on pop up above their heads by giving them some encouragement. It also increases uh, the drops that they get during that for, for a little bit of time after they get a ride on. Drops are uh, experience, well not experience, but, but a currency that you can earn in game in order to buy new equipment in game, new socks, new helmets, new bikes, new wheels, different things that even might give you an advantage in game as well buy the right stuff head on over to zwiftinsider.com for more information about all of the bikes and the wheels and what's awesome about the different kind of kit that you can buy with drops actually it's a great little resource uh for all of the information on that but uh, again williams heading toward the front this is natasha williams revo cookie monsters right now hammering away she's put out about a solid 3.2 watts per kilogram so far right on the category limit actually she's a level 50 swifter it's got a great profile over on uh, over on, on Zwift Power. This is one of the uh, things that we really definitely wanted to highlight about uh, the world of handicap racing and community racing because it, it, it really is, is a great resource for families. And uh, the profile here reminds me of that. She's, she's got a great Zwift in the, in the background with her holding uh, a newborn, it looks like, over her shoulder or, or you know, a very, very young child. Awesome to see them, uh, you know, it looks like a mother hammering away out on Zwift right now and getting her workout in, working with people of like ability to try and win against these other categories. You know, it, it's always cool to see you've got, you know, family focused individuals that are able to get an amazing workout and are out here racing against World Cup level focused individuals at the elite level all hammering away against each other live right now in the world of Zwift from all over the world. It's another thing that we, you know, we haven't highlighted yet during the broadcast here. Look at all the country flags on the right hand side of the screen. Those are all of the places that are represented in each one of these categories. If between each one of the categories out here, the A category, the B category, C category, you know, the D category, all those chunk country flags, we're seeing the Netherlands, we're seeing Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, Canada, all able to jump into the category race to race against world cup level to you know just getting into cycling and trying to, to just up the fitness and get get healthy kind of a thing absolutely awesome to see as usual that's what uh you know to begin with that's what swift is all about but especially these community races are all about and so uh, back in though with the A category, we are seeing it looks like Shepard here as well as Cassie Baldi here taking over toward the front. Cassie is really starting to hammer away 4.5 watts per kilogram coming from Cassie Baldi right now. Averaging so far, it looks like uh, for Cassie Baldi, 4.3 watts per kilogram. Amongst this A category, it looks like the brunt of the work has been done by Cassie at 4.3. Tina Grobler, though, also riding for Team Revo. 4.2 watts per kilogram coming from her. Samara Shepard there at a 4.1. Uh, Vicky Neeland here at this point has fallen off uh, pace here, I believe, with the main pack. Uh, and then it's going to be C. Harris Momsen here has also fallen off pace, I believe, 
um, in the main pack. Grobler now 34 seconds back as well. So we are down, it looks like, to one, two, three, four, five riders here in this main A pack. Uh, they are 138 back. It, you know, they're, they're dropping like fives from these a, this A category. It's going to really be uh, difficult here at this point, it looks like, to bring this back because they, of, of the amount of riders that they have. There is just a reality that more bodies makes more firepower. You know, more, the, the more wattage and speed you can produce at the front of this pack over threshold efforts are so incredibly important and they are going to have to put everything on the line at this point. Borman's now seen I think that it's starting to uh, come down as far as the pace that's being able to behold. She pushes at the front here and starts to walk away actually breaking away from the pack here saying come on ladies let's go. 6.6 .6 watts per kilogram here coming from Borman. Shepard now seeing that it's opening up. Shepard from Vision here. The infighting is already starting here because I think Borman's just got sick of it. She said look we need somebody to do some sort of work here and Sylvie Borman's team experimental here now from this A category. Level 29 Swifter. She's coming out of the Netherlands now here. She's got 48 races and uh, has won plenty of races out on Zwift here. She also participated, looks like, in the Canyon Trim Zwift Academy and won a race back on September 23rd, actually, as a part of that. So watch out for Bormans to just walk away with this one. But Shepard's saying, no, not going anywhere. We're going to work together here still. But uh, the gloves are coming off a little bit, I think, because some of these riders are saying, look, we need to push this pace. It's 118 at this point. And as far as the live tracker goes, it looks like they're only got a lap and a half to go. We're on lap number four for the D category at this point. There's an 18 second gap between the C's and the D's. The C's, look at this, this is the catch here, just about to happen between this C and this D category. There's the C's, it's about eight seconds up to the next uh, group here at this point. 10 seconds now, as you can see here. This is the D category, they're trying to hold them off here now, but it's just not going to happen, it looks like, as B Kittle. Now Williams there toward the front there. Revo here doing the work to bring it in. They're just within that last few meters that need to be closed down at the D category trying to do everything they can but it's just not going to happen here and I think the C's maybe uh, not the favorites though at this point as look the B category is right there as well look at these look at these scenes here D category they're the current leaders still out on course but the B's about to make the catch there excuse me the C's just about to make the catch there they can see D's now being caught that's the catch here now, C category, virtual leaders out on corks, mixed up with the Ds. The Ds are going to have to do everything they can just to hang on. Now those C category riders that made the catch, they said, okay, gloves coming off a little bit here. Revo saying, look, Bs are coming quickly. We need to start ramping this up right now. We've got one lap to go. Can we hold on to that 15 seconds? Now, but look, one more time here. What is going on with the B category? We'll see if we can jump back in with them here in just a second as the B category is looking to shut this down now. We can see on the right hand side of the course here, or excuse me, of the of the screen here, there is the catch of the Bs and the Ds now. There's still a gap though between this C category and those Bs though. And it looks like from about eighth place forward in the C category, they are really trying at this point to keep that B category for making the catch, but there's still a lap to go, and I think some of these C's are going to have to start thinking about just hanging onto the wheels, as it looks like, here comes, it looks like Bliger out of the Netherlands now, hammered away, 4.5 watts per kilogram, on a little bit of Z power here, so there might be a couple of uh, hands being thrown in the air a little bit, again, it's community racing, all about getting the workout in, MJ out of Denmark here, looking to close things down uh, in this B category, but they have made the catch officially, it looks like, for the lead group, uh, from what I can see out on course. Uh, it is an eight second, yeah, they are all part of the lead group now. C category, D category, now you can see at the bottom all together with the Bs as well. So it's just up to the A's now. It's one lap to go after they go underneath this sprint banner in just a moment. 29 Ks in total between all of the riders now. Now, after this race, in just about five minutes from now, Five minutes from now, so the D category in the open race that's going to be starting in five minutes, 7.45 p.m. GMT time, that that race is just about to start. That is going to be the men's and women's open race. Anybody can jump into that. If you do want to still jump out there, you've got time. 
maybe in that D category. You got a little bit of time though to the start for the C category. They got about seven minutes to the start. And in the A category, we've got about 11 minutes to start to the start of the open race. So if you still want to jump into that, you can do so. Uh, but we're here with the ladies only women's race now. And it's only, from what I can see, 40 seconds, I believe it is, on the uh, timer there between this A category and the Bs. Bs, it looks like, favorite on the day. 44 seconds now. Let's go ahead and take a quick look here. This is the front end of this B category. And, uh, no, excuse me, not the front end of the B category. This is the back end of the B category. It looks like there's been a drop-off here. It's all together, though, at the front end of the category here at this point as the Bs and the uh, Cs here are all mixed together still. Interesting to see. BRT Hellcats here with uh, Annabelle Cox, who we did do an interview with a couple weeks ago. She's uh, she's coming out of Australia. Still mixed in with some of these Cs, and some of the Ds are in there as well. This is a super surge group here now at this point. This is the C look uh, with uh, Burns here. Now, as you can see, making her way to the front now in this C category. And then in with the D category still. Still some riders there that are hanging out amongst them as well. And so look at all the jerseys here mixed in together. Absolutely awesome to see all of them working together up against those A's and actually gaining time. Now you can see how incredibly strong it is to have more riders amongst the group out there. And the C's here is what you were seeing here. The B's and the D's all working well together here. And with the B and the C category mixed together, it may not favor either because there is just the reality that this is based on functional threshold power, one hour power. A lot of riders who might not have a great functional threshold power still may have an amazing sprint. And because of that, we might see a situation here where the C category can still take the win even though they've been caught. They're going to have to sit in a lot though. They're going to have to really focus on reserving as much energy as they possibly can to hold off. Um, you know, or, or, or to not hold off, but to focus in on that sprint and not waste too much energy up against these B cat. Now, some of these B category riders that might be watching the Cs, they might be thinking, all right, we really need to drop these riders off. This is dead weight at this point. We've got the higher watts per kilogram. Let's not allow them just to sit on our wheels here, but it looks like it's just not happening because this is first place in the B category. And it looks like it's just not going much of anywhere here at this point. And um, this B category might have their work cut out for them against some of these Cs. Now back up to the front, it's going to be B Kiddo here from Revo. And then it's going to be McKay, McKay here now coming on from the AHDR ladies team now. Uh, BRT Hellcats Annabelle's door to the front there. It's going to be Burns there from DDC. Deep, deep coaching now taking over the front, it looks like, out of the US of A. So solid efforts here so far. Uh, Revo now toward the front again. They're going to be taking a left-hand turn here in just a moment. 52 seconds back to that A category. I just don't think it's going to be done here by the A's. And I think the race might be over for the A riders here. Samar Shepard here said, that's enough. I'm going on a solo venture. 5.9, 6.0 watts per kilogram. She's got something to show here. We're going to give her some ride-ons. She is hammering away. She's got an 11-second gap here at this point. She's heading on toward the industrial park. We saw the left-hand turn just a moment ago from this B category. But as you can see, they're already on to the cobbles here. They're going to head into the last couple of kilometers in just a moment. And I think it's going to be a B category versus C category situation. Some of the Ds still sitting in, as you can see, amongst this group here. But the Bs really starting to take over the front. We're seeing it looks like Frenzy here taking over the front now, pushing 3.4 watts per kilogram. Milger there as well, coming out of the Netherlands, taking over toward the front. And then it's going to be Fierzon, El Fierzon, and Dwyer there, all toward the front. McKay there from AHDR, nothing but light blue jerseys into the final K and a half or so as we're finishing out this race here in the Lamb Chop Racing for the ladies only. The D category for the open race has taken out, off out on course. We'll be jumping in with them in just a moment uh, for the uh, open race as they get out on courses. They're heading out on Watopia today. Uh, they're going to be on a different, uh, different race course today uh, for that race. They'll be doing the Volcano Flat Course uh, today. I believe that is going to be uh, for Volcano Flat on two laps for a total of 25 kilometers, I believe it is. 
for the Lamb Chop Series out there, Volcano Flat on Watopia. We'll be jumping in with that in just a moment. We got to finish up this race here, and we're starting to get a solid lead out here in this B category for the ladies only. It's going to be Frenzy here. BZR now sitting in on Vilga from coming out of the Netherlands. A category with Samara Shepard still hammering away, trying to do everything she can. You can see the difference, though, here between the two categories. They're both on cobbles here, but 49 seconds, it's just not going to happen. The pack was just too strong. But Shepard can still win outright against the other ladies. Some of the other ladies here still trying to close things down. Sylvia Bormans, as you can see here, from Team Experimental, trying to make it happen. We're going to jump back in with the bees because we're about to get into the sprint situation here. Still a few C category riders sitting on the wheels now. Jay Burns there, coming from DDC here, trying to make something happen still, it looks like. Revo now sitting in well as well, it looks like, uh, toward the front, but the B category completely taking over at the front. It's going to be S. Dwyer now at this point, leading things out in Germany. We see on the left-hand side of the screen there, there's the sprint banner. they got to do a 180-degree turn within about 600 meters now at this point. Frenzy, BZR now taking over, it looks like. 187 beats per minute here, coming from this rider. Very early to make your way to the front, though. Maybe Maybe just a position to move, looking for second or third wheel. That's where you need to be as you head into the final sprint and any Zwift race. Just like in real life racing, you do not want to be the lead out unless you're willing to sacrifice your race for somebody else out there and just drive that speed forward and not allow others to come around to take over the positions. Nothing but light blue at the front here at this point. Now we're seeing it looks like Fears on. Open it up. It's a very early attack around the corner actually here. Nine watts per kilogram coming from Fears on. The germ right out of Germany. MJ going out of Denmark mark here it looks like it's gonna be fears on holding on to one second as they head into the final sprint section 10.4 watts per kilogram coming from mj though at this point mj's absolutely starting to close the gap down it looks like it's gonna be mj to the line the danish rider pulling it off here for the win in the b category and solid effort there coming from her as it's going to be b category this week in race Number three, MJ riding unattached actually uh, out here and uh, focusing on the lamb chop. She took second last week in the lamb chop race actually. So able to take a win out here today and it's going to be MJ there, 41-47. Looks like with uh, Lee Fears out, followed up by Jessica Hamilton. Then Sarah Dwyer for Kirschmer's East Side. Very strong team out on Zwift. Re, uh, been showing up in that Hino Cup hammering away. So uh, good to see Kirschmer's Sightly showing up. And then it's going to be Majorine de Vilgarar uh, hammering away for a solid fifth place. Annabelle Cox for the BRT Hellcats coming through for sixth. And then it's going to be Kath McKay for AHDR Ladies out there for seventh place. Beatrix Kiddo hammering away for now the C category. Good to see hanging on. Right to the line. We said they were going to be able to challenge still. And look, that's exactly what happened there. And then we do see it looks like another Revo rider with uh, Seal J. Coleman. And then it looks like Jen Burns for Dutch Diesel Cycling uh, coming through in 10th. So now we're heading on over toward Watopia. We uh, have uh, the next race getting underway. Uh, 245 to the start of the A category out on the open category race. So that was the ladies only race for the Lamb Chop. Now we're leaving Richmond, heading out over to Watopia here now as riders are already out on course. And it's going to be two laps of the Volcano, Watopia Volcano Flat for the Lamb Chop series here, race number three in the open category. Again, you're just tuning in. D, C, B, A categories all racing each other on their ability levels. Jumping into the race category that you fit with for whatever level of fitness that you might have. We've got people from world champion type efforts uh, or abilities uh, all the way to beginners hammering, against, hammering out there against each other. Uh, in these races now. Now we're into the D category here. They're into the under, what, underground uh on Watopia here now, this is Ocean Boulevard, one of the expansions, uh, earlier expansions of the Watopia course. Uh, and as they head on through this uphill grind here over toward uh, the marina here for a moment, they're going to be taking a left-hand turn toward the old Italian village and then into the expansion to the volcano. And then they'll head on through the volcano and back on toward the uh flatter flat through all the flat sections essentially of watopia back toward the start finish line 
Uh, we are 2.2. It looks like miles in so far to this race here as we do have miles at the top here. It looks like we're going to be swapping it up a little bit between the kilometers and the miles for the race out here today. It does look like we have some very big hitters, though, jumping into this race now as well. The B category has already gotten out on course. They just started their race, it looks like, as uh, they are a half a kilometer in with the lead group. It looks like 131 riders have jumped into the B category. A category is 46 seconds to the start of their race, it looks like. The category um, di differences between the times, I believe, is about the same as we did see in the women's race. We'll have to double check that here, but uh, it does look like as far as who is showing up, we've got the French team, 2RR, showing up out there today. We've got Bike Strom with George Beck out there. Ash Beach is out there, actually. Most likely live streaming his race. Make sure to check him out over on YouTube. Lots of um, racer perspective streams going on out there. If uh, Make sure to check him out on your favorite, favorite streaming platform as uh, it's always really great to see all of the uh, different riders that are sharing their perspectives in the races out there. So uh, BRT is also out there with Alan Campbell and Michael Cox, as well as Tom Gakes. It looks like all racing for that BRT team. Uh, in this B category that we're looking at right now, though, it does look like it is going to be uh, BZR cycling team is out there. The Belgian Zwift racing team, Christoph Schaap, as well as Matthew DePaul. It's going to be Greg Michelins, as well as Frederick Boulan, all working together to try and make this category go as fast as they possibly can. Uh, now, if you're wondering, I'm talking about teams within this category working together for the category. If you're unfamiliar with Chop Racing, you're just tuning in, and you're wondering what this is all about, definitely going to want to let you know exactly what's going on here. Lamb Chop Racing is a handicap race. It means that all the subgroups, A, B, C, or D, they set off at different times, but the winner is the first rider across the line, regardless of the subgroup. So because of the time gaps that are here out on the race course, that gives the D category the ability to take a win in this uh, in this race out here today. They do have 4.9 kilometers in so far. 7:37, they're into the race. The B category we were just looking at are only 2:45 into the race, and they got to shut that gap down to this D category to try and win it, and then get across the line first. First one across the line still wins, so it's still a race for a single individual. The B category might win with that single individual like you would with a team if you're working for a team and your category gets across first or your team gets across first. But at the end of the day, it is the first rider across. So there is still a little bit of battle within the category to try and take a win. Now, uh, we, had, we did have an amazing time in the Southern Hemisphere with the handicap racing and the uh, lamb chop. Lamb Chop, that term is coming from our partnership with Black Sheep Cycling Apparel. That's what all these jerseys are designed to buy and put in game. Uh, pretty awesome to have them on board with a partnership for this series. They're coming out of Brisbane, Australia. Brisbane, Australia. And uh, the reason that it's kind of a, more of a Southern Hemisphere thing where we've started this all with, it's a very popular uh, racing uh racing genre down there in the southern hemisphere actually and uh, we had an amazing time broadcasting them over the northern hemisphere summer and over the southern hemisphere winter actually and uh because it was so popular we brought it to european as well as the americas now if you're in north america if one you know in central time right now it's 1 54 p.m you know and you're like well i'm at work or well it's not it's thanksgiving obviously you're not at work right now if they, in, in, in north america uh, for the us of a but you're not like, look, I can't participate in this. You, there's also a North America race times as well. They're not going to be broadcast, but uh, it is going to be 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, ET, EDT for the women's only for the Lamb Chop. And then it's going to be 7.45 for the Lamb Chop for everyone, the open to everyone category. So make sure to jump into those if those are the times that you can do those races and try and get a win no matter what your racing ability level is. So... D category, though, we're looking at here. It looks like 61 riders has jumped into here, and they're going to be taking a left-hand turn in just a moment on over toward the Italian village. This is a difficult part of course, actually, to stick together, especially into a, a uh, group and drafting situation here. Trying to hold on to a wheel as you take these turns, sometimes, just like in real life, ra real life racing, can be very difficult uh, because of how the drafting works around these corners. And then this left-hand turn 
you, you lose the draft for a minute, and then there's this little puncher here. It's about a 6% grading for about 20 seconds or so. Really can make things difficult. We'll see if the D category can keep it together. You do see it, one rider here now really starting to hammer off the front. It's going to be Sea Walker out of the US of A. Getting a little bit of a gap over the rest of the riders, but it's going to really increase the speed. As long as the riders can grab out of the wheel there, that's going to be to their advantage. Hammering away at that 36 miles per hour and trying to hold off those other categories out on course. The A category has jumped out on course now, it looks like, and uh, they are flying already. 72 riders. Now, they are not going to run out of firepower today, as we did see Samara Shepard walk away from the rest of the A category in the women's only race. We're most likely not going to see that in this race here, as they are leaving. This is a serious effort in the A category, as they come out of the underground for the water tunnel here on Ocean Boulevard. Brett Boniface at the front here, 554 watts right now. They're hammering at 50 kilometers per hour out of that underground here at this point. They are only 54 seconds behind. Those have been dropped in the B category. Some have already dropped off already. 131 in the B category. Let's see what the difference, though, is between the two categories here really quick. As we look at the front end of the B category now, it's going to be, uh, as we're seeing, what well, is the C category? Sorry about that. But uh, as we look at the C category, they're not that far behind, actually, what I can see the uh, this other category here at this point. So look at the difference. This is not very much. C category, B category, it's all kind of coming together a little bit here already. And they're going to have their work cut out for them as the A's. With 71 riders in this A category, and the kind of firepower that is in this A category, I mean, at the front, we're seeing Vang here from Team Callus now, one of the new esports teams uh, that recently came from a split within the KISS racing team, actually. G Foley to the front, from coming from uh, coming out of Ireland now. We're seeing Team Cryogen out there as well. Jerksis now making the way to the front. Morton Vang, though, one of the strongest riders we've ever seen out on Zwift, absolutely demolishing at 181 beats per minute, six watts per kilogram at the front. If you want to be a part of this race at the front here, and putting those over under efforts in that's what we're talking about seven watts per kilogram now scotty weiss now here toward the front out of the us of a one of the the top swifters that we've seen out on you know out in the world of watopia over and over again here led plenty of group rides scotty weiss 6.3 at the front here now vidar mail now taking over for team callus out of norway here too so again some of the strongest teams and the strongest riders we've ever seen. And because of the kind of efforts we're seeing on the front here of this race in the A category, things are really starting to break apart. Already the A category starting to get demolished now and getting some splits out of those 72 riders here. Now back in with the C category, 130 riders from, you can see 176 beats per minute, 208 watts. As we're looking here for a rider, JL, uh, looks like coming out of Sweden. And then it's going to be Garden here as well now coming out. It looks like, well, at least going into the Italian villages, they disappear from the riders nearby, near, nearby list now. Currently working their way up to 17th place in the C category. So back in with the four-way look here now, you can see the wattage differences. 183 from that D category from the lead riders there. Then the C category at the bottom left there, 224 currently for the live wattage there. In the upper right there, there's the B category with the light blues as they head on toward the Italian village. And then in the A category, they are just heading off of the marina section and off of Ocean Boulevard in just a moment. There's the right-hand turn. They'll be taking the left here, leaving Ocean Boulevard and heading toward the forward Watopia. Short little stint on the forward Watopia section, then on over toward the expansion for the Volcano Flat course here. So you can see exactly where each one of the categories are at right now. And uh, the D category about to enter the volcano. They're going to hit that two-tier in just a second. That's going to be the one section of the course where some of these uh, higher categories are going to have a serious advantage to make up a lot of time over the other categories because it really is all about the watts per kilogram they are able to produce on those sections of the course actually so uh, as you can see this is the C category right here heading toward that two tier that the D category is just a, is just getting into right now at that 9.6 kilometers in so far uh, the difference between the groups here, 149, 248, and 432. So 
Beat D category, current lead group out on course, 9.6 kilometers in, as you can see. C category, uh, as we were looking at here in just a second here, see if we can get back in with the C category. Here we go with the C category now. And they are just, just a little ways off, actually, about a kilometer or so back from that D category that are just entering into the volcano here, the two tier just ahead of that C category here now at this point. So uh, then in with the Bs out here, they are, from what I can see, uh, just heading toward the volcano at this point, not quite toward that two tier, but look at the difference in the, in the time gap. It's only about a minute here at this point. It's really the A's that seem to have the most to make up here. Now as we look at the A category here, 421 back, they're heading on over toward that same section. They're almost all in the same section of road though here. This A category, the kind of speeds they're pulling here is just maybe way too much as they're already starting to catch some of those B category riders that have fallen off pace here. And this is just absolutely a wattage bazooka fest here out there. I mean, they are hammered away, almost 50 kilometers per hour on a 0% gradient as worst here coming out of Switzerland is putting down the effort. Vang now taking over to the front. 5.7 watts per kilogram coming from him now. We've got a little bit of chatter here coming through from the A category encouraging each other on. Leg box there from 2RR. And a lot of riders here getting a free ride though in this A category as Callus is just making a team time trial type situation absolutely demolishing this, this uh, race out here two days. So now we are seeing, seeing that uh, there is um, a solid effort here coming from a lot of the riders, but uh, the the main thing that, we're, that, that we really like to focus on for the Lamb Chop Racing is that it's, you know, as we're looking at this A category, we've seen some of the strongest riders, A Campbell here, coming from one of the top esports team that is the Bolt Racing team hammering away right now obviously 358 watts steady here just to hold on the 34th place now 35th place out there on course but then there's just also the reality here of this d category hammered away they're heading back in to their next lap two laps they're gonna be doing here 25 kilometers in total 148 beats per minute here coming from c walker out of the us of a and uh you know they're hammering away and putting in just as much effort because it's based on that FTP because it's based on their fitness level. Each one of these riders are really pushing the other riders to just hang on as they look to hold off that other category. They know what the time gaps are. They can look behind themselves on the uh, on, on the riders nearby list. And because of that, they know they need to really put in everything they can for their category to hold on to that gap. 133 back is all it is, 208 back to the to the B category, 334. If they're watching the broadcast at the same time, they've got the witness of everybody that's out there in the viewership saying, come on, we've got to hold on and get this win for our category here. And that's exactly what it looks like they're doing as we head toward the front of the group here. It does look like we've got a uh, rider here coming out of Japan, actually. Takeda hammering away at the front here toward first place as uh, we see all of the different bikes that they've chosen on the day. A couple of Tron bikes in there, some of uh, level one starter bikes as well with those Zwift Originals. Always cool to see as we look at sixth place here with Takeda. Now look at the kind of pace that's been set here in the reality of this race here. A category rider, 41st place, uh, just done off the back here, BRT just demolished at this point. I mean, obviously the pace is insane if we have some of the strongest riders in Zwift unable to hang on at the front end of this. Of this. And this is the section, of course, where the most effort, uh, the most time can really be made up because of that two tier, you see you're heading into the volcano. It's about a six, seven, eight percent gradient, levels out a little bit and then kicks again. And because of that, they can make up a ton of time against the other riders putting out 10 watts 11 watts per kilogram it looks like that's exactly what they did but because of that the rider the riders that are unable to put that kind of kick out on the course or maybe a little bit of not paying attention maybe a little bit of you know uh mishap not really focusing on the riders in front of you losing the draft 
Sandvik, Campbell, we're seeing off the back here. Uh, a couple other mills there from BRT. Some of these riders here that are off the back out of the 72, very strong riders, but maybe just a moment of not paying attention. And uh, next thing you know, you're off the back in a Zwift race and you're not bringing this pack back. I mean, there's not going to be a lull. That's one of the differences between this race and a lot of the other races is there will be no lull. There will, that will be the highest speed that this A category can possibly hold. They will hold at 52 kilometers per hour currently coming from Psychopath, making his way to the front with this Psychopath type of pace right now as they catch some of the front end of this or the back end of this C category uh, and B category out on course. So a lot of the riders that uh, have fallen off the pace there in those those categories that they are catching some of the d's now they're going through here with spider ray we're also seeing some of the c category only about six seconds up with e block and jensen rosen rosencrantz here as well so a category picking up the stragglers and it's going to be all about who is able to hang on to the finish here as the difference between the c's and the b's here at this point interesting to see as uh this d category is heading into their Ocean Boulevard for the second time. It's not a whole lot of gap here. I mean, look, A category already heading in to their lap here. D category, as you can see, they're only entering Ocean Boulevard at this point. Where is the Bs out on course? This is the C category we're looking at here, and they're just coming through. It looks like um, if we look through, try and, try and see where exactly is this C category out on course as uh, they're just taking the left-hand turn. So... Here's the different categories. This is the four ways to give us a good idea here. And as you can see, the C category looks like already caught by that B category from what we can tell. So uh, B category over onto Ocean Boulevard already. C category also just jumping onto Ocean Boulevard. I think the catch is just being made as the B category enters into to that C category. So the chop is made there. Now it's becoming a, somewhat of a super group. That D category in the upper left-hand corner, it's all together at this point. It is essentially eight, it's essentially D, B, and Cs. Excuse me, D, C, and Bs all together at this point, pretty much. You know, D category, they've got about maybe 100, 200 meters at this point. They're all in the same downhill section. It's going to be caught here in just a second, and it's going to be up to the super group to really push the pace now at the front. Anybody who's got anything left, it's got to be a complete sacrifice. Essentially, if they want to hold on to this, it may be possible, but it's got to be all out sprints continually giving the rest of the group everything you got and then just drop off. Essentially, the same thing as you see in a team time trial situation where, look, I've got nothing left. We have to put everything on, the, on out on course here at this point. That we we're, If we're going to win this, we have to sacrifice a few riders. That's what these categories have to do at this point because this A category is just entering the downhill that we just saw the C category go through here. And it looks like the chop has been made very early out on course here today. The time gaps here with this flat course and the amount of firepower may be not quite as large as we thought it was going to be. It's just going to be an A category elite all-out race here at the end here c category now virtual leaders i believe out on course b category about to make that juncture up here in just a second we'll have to wait and see what the gaps are here virtually i'm going to take a quick look here at zwipower.com if you want to follow along over at zwipower.com as well you can do so and you can see what the live time gaps are over there and it looks like we do have a couple of d category riders, maybe just off the front a little bit still i do see one or two here but i do see a good contingent here of b's and c's all together here a little ways back from those d's so there may be a contingent of d's that we missed out on course here that have a little bit of a gap over the rest here we'll have to wait and see if that catch is going to be made see if we can find them out on course uh in one of our feeds here. So i am seeing something here over on zippower.com with uh one or two d's that may be a little ways ahead of that main group but they're about to head under the old school jarvis tree that we like to call it you wonder why do we call it jarvis tree is that uh big redwood there uh is uh familiar to what was on the original beta uh game beta tester game there was a giant tree that you went under just like that out in jarvis and lots of redwoods uh out there and so uh it was kind of a throwback it seemed like to those that, of us that were a part of uh the beta testing when we did see that put in the game now we're back in with this D category. Here we go. This is the lead, actually. So there were a few that did 
get away to a section of the course that we thought the Ds were being caught, but they were not actually. Excuse me on that uh, on that call out earlier, but they are not a whole lot of wiggle room to work with here as the C's and the B's are now really starting to hammer away. This is another section of the course for the C and the D for, for uh, the C and the D category right now where they can make up some time and carry some speed over as they head up that little 3% grade. They're just exiting the uh, Ocean Boulevard underground wa water tunnel here as they look to chase down this D category. D category just exiting uh, the Ocean Boulevard Underground as well, heading this right-hand turn away from the jungle left-hand turn, uh, as you can see from that expansion there. But now they're going to head over the bridge and into the marina here in just a second. The B category now, as you can see, mixed in with the Cs a little bit here. They're just about to head to that same section here. The catch about to be made. Where are the A's now, though? That's going to be the question here out on course. The A category is just heading... It looks like through this same section, actually, we're with, uh, this is absolutely insanity from this A category. They have a few of the Ds within their sights now. It's going to be Boniface at the front again with a three-second gap here at this point as they're about to catch some of the D category that are off the back from this main group here. But uh, they have not quite made the juncture up here just at, just at this point. We are looking at the B category here, mixing with the Cs. They do have a little bit of a time gap to open up because as you can see, this D category exiting the dirt section there through the marina. So they still got a gap to work with here. It's not very much, but definitely have opened things up here. Now back with the A's. We found them out on course. It's going to be Sherrod here coming from... Uh, the OVB team out of Great Britain. A little bit of encouragement, it looks like, on the upper right hand uh, on the upper right hand corner of the screen there. Tenth place, eleventh place for the A category now. Team Callus now making the way to the front here. Boniface has had a two second gap though, really pushing the pace and forcing the other riders here to try and get back on terms. Now with the C category being caught, Boniface making his way through some of this lap traffic. That is going to make things interesting as well because the lap traffic does tend to. Make things a little difficult on the draft if you do not come through with enough wattage action. You're just looking for a wheel can make it so that you end up on a draft on a lower category. So that's always a difficult situation. A category, making the catch on some of the Ds and the, excuse me, the Bs and the Cs. Here's the D category, making the right-hand turn as they exit that uh, section that the As are just entering this section of course here as you're seeing for the A category this is over the bridge that the Ds are just exiting the, ex the Ds category just exited that section are making a right hand turn little S turn that is on Ocean Boulevard and it's gonna be a left hand turn onto that uphill grind into the Italian village we talked about last lap a very difficult section of course to try and stay together the A category now as you can see this is the battle between the A category and that B category and D category out on course. So we've got a couple of time gaps that are interesting on the bottom of the screen here. It looks like it's saying that the B category is the virtual lead. No, there it is. It's updated. It's actually the D category that's the virtual lead that's out on course. It's nine seconds is the difference here between that B category and the Ds out on course here. So if I jump back in with the uh, C, excuse me, the Bs here, you can see the catch just about to be made here for this B category, but they are on the S turn as well, as you can see. Now they have made that catch, it looks like, as we jump back in with the D. So it's all together here. The A's, from we can see, 18 seconds back. It's not a whole lot of difference. It's essentially on the exactly exact same section, and it looks like the chop is going to be made. It's going to be an A elite race, but it's going to be, a, for the B category, though, it's going to be about hanging on to this A's as they come freight training through. 47 kilometers per hour toward the front end of this A category now at this point. I'm looking to see who is taking over. Boniface now making his way to the back, actually. I think it was just a little bit too much effort. As they catch more of the Ds, A category, I think, is about to be the virtual leaders out on course here as they do head through some of the Ds that have been caught. There's still a few Ds ahead, though. This 16-second gap is correct. There's just a few more up ahead here. We're looking for the feeds here to see exactly where things are at. And it looks like this is over the hump there and into the Italian village, the back end of this B category here. There's still some ahead there, about six second gap, I think, 
do the riders up toward the front here still. So as we look for the virtual lead out on course, this is back in with the A's. They're just coming over that little up, that little hump and into the downhill, into the Italian village. It'll be a left-hand turn onto the dirt here. But I think this is the virtual lead right here. As they head to this Italian village, and here's the A's. They're making the catch right now. Now it's going to be about this B category we're looking at right here to hold on to the A's as they come flying through into this section of the course, the downhill grind. How much speed can they carry through for this top 20? And now as the dirt gets in the face, the dust is there, hanging onto a wheel. It's starting to string out. Look at the straight line of riders. The arrow power being thrown down, just looking to hang on because this is a moment of truth for these catches as the groups get all together and they start to mingle and mix, finding the wheels and finding who's actually in the lead it's going to be so incredibly important at this point not losing the front end it's essentially just throw down the watts that you have because you're making your way through an entire hundreds of hundreds of riders to make your way to the front look at the gray jerseys as they look to try and make their way through here this is the catch with the B category as they watch the A's come through. They have to just find a wheel to hang on and maybe be involved in a sprint through sprint still if they can make it through the two tier. Back in with the A category. Here's Sherrod here, OVR. He's in 22nd place, though. We've got to get it to the front of this category. Scotty Weiss has been hammering a while out. Six plus watts per kilogram, 5-4 now. We're seeing Cryogen taking over at the front. Vang there from Team Callus now. 181 beats Maria Tabarek there coming out of France now it looks like as well Foley there from Ireland now they're at the front of this A category and it looks like Sherrod here from OVB he's fallen off it's over for Sherrod here at this point he's not going to hang on it looks like as he's mixed in with these B category riders now I believe a split is about to happen we'll see if he can get back on here now oh Sherrod Maybe just grabbing back on. It looks like they backed off a little bit at the front here. Cryogen, though, 8.6 watts per kilogram coming from him. It looks like Weiss now looking to jump back on, but it's going to be K Hacker here from Team Cryogen. 527 watts, 171 beats per minute right now. Coming from a rider that's off the front. He's looking to make a break very early here at this point in this race now. As we're looking here at Hacker here, Cryogen, Tabrek taking over. Now there's going to be a rider to the front. It's going to be Flaherty now looking to counter now, it looks like. Not going to be going anywhere, though, and it's going to be the A's and the B's still all together. Shout out to Gil Stam Maria here coming out of Brazil, able to hang on with the front end of this A category. Foley now looking to go here. Snaggle puts some Cryogen now. About to take the right-hand turn onto the two-tier here between these riders. Team Cryogen now sitting steady, but he's got another rider, a teammate there off the front. Snaggle puss is who's off the front here, it looks like, from Cryogen in game names there. Always fun to see what they're putting in, but it's going to be Boniface now with a two-second gap. Looks like ODZ trying to get away at the front end of this race here. Scotty Weiss trying to shut things down. 10.7 watts per kilogram coming from Scotty Weiss. Some of the strongest racers now uh, at the front end of this race looking to try and just take the win out right here. And it's essentially an elite race here at this point because the chop has been made. The handicaps were not quite enough for the C and the D category. They can still take the win within their category, but right now at the front end of this race, it's between the A's and some of the B riders that are just hanging on. It's going to be Manic there we're seeing as well as T. Wurrer here coming out of Great Britain in the B category, able to just hang on to the pace at the front of this two, uh, at the front of this race in the uh, over the two tier here now back in with the, the front end of the A category we'll see if we can find it Scotty Weiss 6.4 watts per kilogram that's a great avatar to follow here 179 beats per minute here he's going to know how to win a sprint we've seen crazy kicks from this rider here in the final meters we'll see if he can play it smart though as a rider who does sprint group rides he's run sprint group rides group rides out on Zwift week in and week out on this exact course coming into this exact finish he knows exactly how to time things right but so do so many others team callus here looking to set things up jerk desk bang there as well they're sitting in about ninth or tenth place right now scotty weiss now making his way up to the first place now maybe wanting to take over here just making sure that the, the, there's no breaks that kind of take over we see a rider getting coned he's gonna be removed from the race there that's because he got his he got the little pro calling uh signal there saying oh maybe 
Time to check the setup there, but Talbot now off the back a little bit. Talbot there from Team Spunk, just trying to hang on at 190 beats per minute. The ramping up is so incredibly high. If you've ever been a part of a Zwift race in these final meters, and you're amongst the category that is right at your limit, you're amongst riders that are just above maybe your fitness level, your ability, from here on out, it essentially feels like an all-out interval, and then they sprint. They still somehow have something over the top. We'll see who, though, has the fitness to hang on and still sprint at the end, still kick into what I'm predicting is going to be 11 to 15 watts per kilogram to try and take the win here. Look at it start to ramp up here. 3% uphill gradient here. A category has completely taken over. James Hodges is still in there. Team Cryogen. Porter James is there as well. Now it's going to be Santos toward the front. Hodges now as well. Vang, though, Cal wants to take over. They want to make it fast enough that nobody can come around. Is there 5.3 watts per kilogram, but 183 beats per minute. How much more can they have left in the tank? They've done so much work. Team Callus. It's going to be Foley from Ireland now taking over to the front. we still got a B-Rider with Manic here at the front here. Berg is starting to take over. Snagglepuss, though. They're all starting to back off a little bit, waiting for the right moment, because if you go too early, you'll waste your effort, but it's Boniface at the perfect moment. This is the section of course where you want to go because this is where the speed from the downhill carries through into those last 300 meters, and we hit the 300 meters to go mark. Boniface with an arrow power. Boniface has got the gap. It looks like a meter, but no, Ed Santos hanging onto the wheel. Will Santos come through? Santos got 16 watts per kilogram. Vidar Mayo, though, perfectly timed. Is going to take it to the line. Vidar Mayo with that power up is not even going to matter. The Norwegian national champion, Vidar Mayo, takes down the sprint in the A category, it looks like here. Absolute amazing effort there coming from the A category to take the win in the chop lamb chop racing here today. A category, a little bit more time maybe in the handicap there because they made the catch and were able to take it down. And Team Callis, that new esports team that, that uh, broke off from the KISS racing team uh, in the last couple of weeks to, to be a part of the whole new esports world of Zwift racing, Team Callus is showing up. They are doing it in the Fusion uh, fusion races, World of Fusion Racing. They're showing up in the Hino Cup, obviously, on Wednesdays. And now they're showing up for a little bit of training in the community races. That's what's awesome about the Lamb Chop Racing, Handicap Racing, is that anybody's got a chance to win against some of the best out there. The A category showed up in force this week, obviously, and they put down an amazing time trial. When it came down to the chop, though, and it was time to make the chop, it was Vidar Mayo from Team Callus. Able to take it down by, it looks like a tenth of a second. It looks like uh, Santos there coming through in second place. Brett Boniface, who led things out with that arrow power up, able to hang on for third place. Scotty Weiss, we talked about plenty there. He took fourth. Solid effort there coming from the American. Per, it looks like uh, per Johnny Dubbing there for Team Experimental coming through in fifth. It's going to be George Mills Crowling there coming through for sixth place. James Hodges for the KISS Racing Team. Kiss with finesse. The cake is the lie. James Hodges, two shout out to him for seventh place there. And then it's going to be Josh Harrison, the Snagglepuss, coming through for Team Crowgen. He put out a huge effort early on coming through the volcano and uh, still will hang on for eighth place there. Sebastian D for Team France in T the B category. Big shout out for hanging on to the finish there from that B category. Obviously, great at drafting in the world of Zwift. And then it's going to be 10th place there for Charlie Vallis for We Tried Racing. That's going to be it for us here in the Chop Racing today. Now, again, if you're just tuning in or you wonder when's the next time that you can jump into some Chop Racing, this is going. This is a six-race series. We started on November 14th, and it's going all the way through uh, December 19th, six races in total. Uh, next week for the race, we are going to be out on Innsbruck for the women's uh, race for three laps on the Innsbruck ring. And the men's uh, open race, excuse me, the open race will be on London Flat for two laps uh, for 11.5 kilometers per lap for the open race. We also have a couple other things uh, that we want to give a big shout out to. Obviously, it being Thanksgiving, awesome job to all, all, all the racers, or, or excuse me, riders out there today that participated this morning in the Eric, uh, Eric, Eric Min's Thanksgiving ride. We saw 2,908 people. So cool as far as community goes and all of the riders coming out there today. Chloe Diger jumped in, world champion. 
uh, a multi-time world champion, Olympic champion, going for Tokyo 2020. Able to chat along with Chloe and Eric throughout. There's a couple of spoilers in there uh, in the, the Eric's uh, Thanksgiving ride. I participated in it. It was a great time. We are out in San Sequoia's expansion. Very cool. Also, Giro di Castelli is happening. It's a three-stage event that's happening this weekend. You can unlock three kits, one for each stage. Stage one is going to be out on Bologna. Stage two is going to be on the Watopia Flat Reverse. And stage three, stage three is going to be on the Epic KOM. So make sure to sign up for those. That will be starting tomorrow uh, all the way through Sunday. So that's going to be it for us, though, here on the Lamb Chop Racing. Make sure to tune in next week for more live streams we'll be live on zwift community live on uh tuesday and wednesday and then we'll be back for lamb chop racing next week thursday for the next one for that innsbruck ring as well as the london flat out there for the open race thanks everybody for tuning in great job to all the riders out there today and as always everybody ride on